Welcome to Badgedamia, a podcast so educational two professors could be hosting it. Hi, I'm Dr. Danielle Dickenview, and joining me is Dr. Bill Henneman. Welcome to Badgedamia. This week, I am one lucky duck because I get to hang out with both Bill and his wonderful, amazing wife, Elaine, gerontologist, faculty, athletic rep, and cycle instructor extraordinaire. So, <laughs> Elaine, what's been happening in your life? What's going on? Um, well, I... Um, th- Kind of a little plug if anyone out there is uh, interested, but we are starting our fourth round of Dementia Friendly 18, which you sign up, you get an uh, email each day. It takes like five, 10 minutes a day for basically, you know, three weeks. And um, you learn about dementia and um, we try to do it in more entertaining, um, kind of interesting ways. And then at the end, you would get a certificate. Uh, if you if you complete the challenge at the end and you take a little quiz to see if you pass and then you get a certificate um, that you could if you work in healthcare or social work you could potentially add to your resume. So we are starting on Monday and um, we can still take some new people if you get on the ball and you if if you contact me and I'm easy to contact if you go to <laughs> if you go to UNI gerontology on online like I'm the only gerontologist. So pretty easy to find my contact info. So you're welcome to contact me uh, before Monday if you're interested in that. It's really good. I did it and I thought it was outstanding and I learned a lot. And that's saying a lot because I live with Elaine. And so a lot of this I've already heard, but there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know. So yeah, if if you have a loved one or a family member um, or you just want to know more about it, really good. Absolutely. Do it. You're welcome, honey. I'm here to support you. I know. I know. I appreciate it. so fun today. This is going to be a great, great <laughs> episode. So uh, our question for the week is, what is the best, worst promposal you've either been part of, witnessed, or if you could promposal each other, what would you do? <sighs> I just, in high school, I was more the like winner by default. So I would just kind of hang back and wait till like one of my friends, like the girls in my group of friends didn't have someone and it'd be like, you want to go? You want to go? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, good. Let's go. Um, So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They've really upped the game. Yeah. That's what uh, Christy Marcazzani was telling us. Like she's got three nephews and they were in the like hardcore. So one of them like had a fake play going on and then brought the girl in and proposed on the stage at Cedar Falls. And I like Elaine's just like, no. I am probably the least romantic person on the face of the earth. I'm, and I apologize to Bill, but I <laughs> like, but I um in high school, I had a boyfriend and um, we were, we were together when we went to college, we dated a long time. So there was never really a proposal. It was just assumed that we would go. Um, I do remember though, that um, my mom and I, I I guess had gone shopping and bought a dress for me to go to prom in. And I don't know how, I must've tried it on in front of my boyfriend's mom. Uh, She was not impressed with the dress and she thought it was a little bit risque. So my mom bought me, we went out shopping again and we tried again and bought a different dress. Wow. Ooh, were you like showing your midriff booby? No. Like, what is happening? I, looking back, I think it was maybe like it was short, but not like ridiculously short. But I think it was very like maybe like thin and clingy. And I think maybe it was a little bit low cut. Um, but I was definitely not like a sex pot who was trying to show off her boobs or her midriff or anything like that. Good use of sex pot. (laughs) I I was not that girl in high school. I'm not that girl now. So, um, yeah, I hadn't thought about that for a long time. Yeah. But the dress that, the dress that got vetoed in like 1996 would probably be very conservative now comparatively to what people wear. I'm guessing. 
Yeah, my best friend in high school wore a two-piece dress to one of our proms where like she was showing some midriff and I remember that being pretty scandalous. Um, and I was like really proud of her for her scandal. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was like trying to think about this and I will say this. So my boyfriend in high school was a couple years older than me and looking back on it now I'm like oh my gosh he was like 20 years old going to prom with me I did not appreciate like what he wow. was doing to like a, like fully um so uh Jared you did many things wrong but I just want to thank you for uh, going to prom with me when you were like way too old to be going to prom <laughs> and never complaining about it um so i will give you credit for that um so yeah i was like trying to think about things and i will say so when ryan asked me out on a date the first time it was pretty cute so he was on this we were well so i was on the speech team and he was on the debate team and then i went to illinois state and i was coaching their speech team and he joined the speech team here and we'd like run into each other at tournaments and i went to the uni tournament as a judge and a coach at Illinois State and I went to get you get like a dance card where it has like your schedule for the day and what you're going to be judging and he handed me a sheet of paper that said will you be my girlfriend check yes Aww. or no <laughs> so that um, that's the closest thing I guess to a promposal it wasn't to ask me to prom because we didn't really do prom poses back then I think faking your death and then at the end asking them is probably like the end all and be all. That's, you know, dramatic. Right. Well, if you're going to go, go all out, right? Yes, absolutely. Speaking of going all out, this <laughs> week, <laughs> we had a three hour long episode of but, Bad Moon Paradise. But, but this is, will the podcast still be an hour? Because I feel like, like, the oh yeah podcast, like we have just mm -hmm. a lot to put in no we're now cramming this in in an hour yeah 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 it's a lot. A challenge this this season with like the double decker mm -hmm. like yes. uh, episode so but we're gonna do it we're gonna do it we have lots to cover yeah um, lane's got a meeting at noon we will oh, do that's there. right yeah we will get her there so um this episode does start with um ivan and aaron you know, getting hot over Chelsea and, you know, going into tonight, I was really team Ivan. I was like, you know, Ivan is clearly the one that you like better than Aaron, but wow, <laughs> did things turn a little bit here? So um, quick recap on the situation. It's rose ceremony day. Aaron and Chelsea have been a thing Ivan says that he's just chilling and he's not going to give anyone, he's like not trying to go after anyone's rose, but then he proceeds to make out with Chelsea and the boys go after each other. Chelsea is like somewhere. We don't know where Chelsea's at. Yeah, that's the biggest mystery is that Elaine and I rewatched it last night and it's like Chelsea just kind of wanders in after all this goes down. It's like, where were you? Like, there's not that much room. She had to go to the bathroom, took a while. I don't know. Um because it looked like that took a while like like they they almost they got in each other's faces and they broke up then they got back in each other's faces yeah I don't know where Chelsea was it's a mystery but so like as Chelsea's gone Ivan says oh well like Chelsea asked me to talk to her like I wasn't it wasn't like I plotted this thing you know kind of and people really believe Ivan and then poor Aaron, you know, feels like he's being ganged up on, but his bro, um, James stays loyal. Like one of our favorite quotations, right? Is like, he's like, <laughs> whether, whether he's right or not, I'm, I'm going to be a friend. And I'm like, <laughs> it was like his way of saying like, well, I don't know if you're right here, but like, I got yeah. your back. Whether you're right or wrong, bro. I want those two in the end to leave together I mean and I don't care if they're gay or not but like I just feel like they need to stay together and move in together and be a pair like I don't know after this is over I don't really know where either of them live but when they go back home I don't know how they're going to function without each other it is a concern that we I all agree. like the bromance there 
there's it is a good bromance. It's a good one, yeah. So like finally, like Chelsea comes waltzing in and she's like, uh, like, no, like Ivan asked me to talk. And everybody's like, what? And then like they replay everything and we're like, oh yeah, Ivan, like <laughs> you're lying. And um Ivan, you you're lying. You froze, honey. Oh, sorry. Do your um, joke again. Oh, I just said, Ivan, you're lying. <laughs> yeah. So everybody's a little disappointed in Ivan, a little bit shook. They didn't didn't know this was coming with Ivan. Um, especially Riley, who feels um father like odd disappointment. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Riley just feels everything very intensely. Like when he eats something, it's like just the greatest sandwich he's ever eaten. When he like watches a movie, like he cries more than anyone else in Titanic. Like it's just Riley. I'm with you there, Riley. We, we we're big people with big emotions. <laughs> so, um, Chelsea and Aaron would like have this like weird makeout where like, it was really awkward. And then like Aaron sits up and he's like, I gotta go. What did he say? Did I gotta get a drink. drink. I gotta get a drink. I, I've been saying he reminds me of Napoleon Dynamite kind of. And like, that was a very Napoleon, like they make out and then he's like, I gotta get a drink and just like walked off. Well, what I thought was so interesting about that conversation is they talk about Ivan, but never does it come up that like Chelsea made out with someone else. Right. Like, and then it's just sort of assumed that they're together still. And I don't know if that was ever really established. And it was all really weird for me. I kind of felt like Aaron was mad, but he knew he couldn't be mad at Chelsea. And so because he kept saying, oh, it's your, you know, you, I don't own you. You can do whatever you want. And so he decided that he would just really go after Ivan. Yeah, and then Ivan kind of rose to the occasion, right? So, like, Ivan, like, Chelsea then confronts Ivan about things, and he is so clumsy. Like, he's so clumsy about everything. And I think it becomes pretty apparent at this point that, like, he was just trying to stay on. Mm -hmm. Maybe but that's the game. That's, that's what we do you know and i know people get mad about that that's my person whatever but it's like you're on a reality tv show and that's kind of the game because they were like yeah he's just looking for a rose well of course he is that's the way the whole show is set up that's you know what the show wants him to do oh. but i do want to talk about his hotel hookup situation which i think was at least somewhat staged um I really don't believe that it just happened to a producer happened to leave their phone out and it just happened to have all the, the names and what rooms they like. I think that's bullshit. I think they kind of set him up. Um, yeah, we I were... think they set up the storm too. I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, it like, wasn't a storm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the contestants who none of them are exceedingly bright. They had like someone like banging on a trash can, like, Oh God, here's thunder. And they're like, we got to get out of here. I love it. <laughs> yes. But I, then I also like, they're acting like he, I don't know, like they're acting like he committed some type of horrible crime or killed puppies or, you know, something like that. Like, a, and Wells confronts him and, you know, it's supposed to be like, very emotional and then he needs to tell the group and i you know i just feel like we're, we're making him this big villain so, um yeah i don't get it <laughs> i don't people i don't who... see him as a villain here i don't i don't even see it was that bad of a decision like you know maybe maybe he did connect with that girl at the hotel and maybe they're dating and living happily ever after i don't know for people who don't know what happened he essentially there was the storm they took them to a hotel and I think they were supposed to all be separated or at least the guys and the girls were and he said that he found 
a producer's phone and it like right there said this was it alexis yeah 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 because every time he said it this morning our alexis alexa it's alexa i think but our alexa like thinks it's her so then he went and hung out with her and then they found out and apparently they felt like the way to address this was going to be to make it very dramatic at the rose ceremony and have Wells sit down with him and have this odd like fatherly kind of talk and like you know I can go tell the people or you can it's going to mean more coming from you and then they kick him off and I just I don't think like what he said happened is not really what happened, right? Either he knew some other way or the producer sat the phone down in front of him with it. Like, and they're like, I'm just going to leave my phone here. Heard Alexis might be coming, but it's like, who doesn't have an auto lock on their phone? Who leaves their phone laying around like on that show too? I bet those people get fired if they leave a phone out because they don't want people calling out and stuff. Yeah. I thought that that was fishy. I'm like, either it was really staged or Ivan's like, a, like really doesn't respect people's boundary. Right. Right. And then in terms of like him going and meeting Alexa, I mean, I will say this, it does kind of put the show in a tough spot because if they know about that, I think they kind of had two choices in how to deal with it right either you send alexa down yeah and let her be on that and let them explore the relationship right or and you hope that that creates drama or you tell everybody what happened like they did and use that to fuel drama and so um and this late in the game i'm guessing that they're like hey even if we bring alexa on and her and ivan like connect like they're not going to have enough time to like probably develop a relationship that fuels them to the end. So, but I do think that maybe if they would have, that could have stirred up even more drama. Yes. So I was surprised they didn't go for the, the kill shot on that one and like have her come down during the Rose ceremony and then Chelsea would be like, Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So the Rose ceremony is pretty predictable in a lot of ways there's a few things that maybe um we didn't for sure know so if Natasha does end up giving her a rose to Ed instead of Joe um which I think we sort of saw coming Tia does choose um James over Blake which was probably the right choice so we can kind of hash that out here later but and she gave him like her her giving him the rose was the most vanilla rose state. And it was like, you seem acceptable. Here's your rose. She's like, yes, yeah, I I agree with that. I can't, Elaine. Do you remember exactly what she said? Um, no, I don't. But I read an article um, this morning because I wake up at five, and you know mess around on my phone for an hour and a half so well, I we have know. kittens so she has kitten cuddle time where they lay by her and she reads on her phone and it's amazing i i can't even tell you the ki- the kittens have changed our lives for the better um so there was an article about how when she was there her father had cancer and some of the she said that some she was struggling with that and some of the decisions and some of the things she said were not what maybe she would have normally done hmm. interesting Well, and I mean, I do think that, yeah, yeah, I I think that she was trying to figure out her relationship with James too. So I think that she was like, okay, I'm like clearly going to choose you over Blake. Blake messed up, but like also my vagina doesn't dance for you. Yeah. Right. So, um, yes. So then the important question I have for you all is how do you think Wells is doing in the host role? Did you see that they announced who's going to be the host of the bachelor? Jesse Palmer. I was like really both surprised and underwhelmed by this decision. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to judge it before um, he actually gets an opportunity. Um, But I, I don't think he's a like from the kind of bachelor community, people who have watched for a long time, 
I don't really think that's a person who they're going to get excited about watching. Like if, if people are teetering on, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna watch this season or not. I don't think he's the guy to like bring people in and make them think, yeah, this is a season I really want to get into. Yeah, like, don't re- go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, you can't like give us like <laughs> little John and then David Spade and then like follow it up with Jesse Palmer. <laughs> like, I just feel like- Right. Mm. I don't remember him being anything really. Like, I don't remember him being incredibly like interesting. I don't remember people loving him or hating him. Yeah. If you could choose anybody to be the host for like Michelle's season or the, the next season um, of the regular Bachelor, Bachelor, anybody in the world, who would you choose? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm. One, I think it would be really interesting to have a female host. I mean, I know that they did that with Tasha and um, Caitlin. And is, yeah, and and I just felt like they really didn't use that to the full extent that they could have. I actually really like the rotating hosts. Now, I do think that it's probably a little bit different for Bachelor in Paradise than like for Bachelor right. or Bachelorette. Um, but I also think that it's interesting because they choose to use the role of the host as this person that kind of is this like parental, almost like a parental or a sage advice person that keeps things calm. Mm-hmm. And I think like that's interesting because they could choose to, you know, rather choose someone that would like ask them really challenging questions and poke things. Yeah. So I'm looking for the name of a person. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. We didn't answer. I didn't answer. Chelsea Handler. <laughs> I'm going to go with um, either Danielle or Ooh. Connie Hansen. Oh, Connie Hansen would be amazing. He would be amazing. Oh my goodness. See, the thing is like, historically, they don't really like the host doesn't really have a personality. Danielle, I think you'd kill it. I think you would too. How do we do that? How do we make this happen? Yeah. How do we so maybe that's what we need to do is have everyday people apply and like, host. Yeah. Just like a like, fan. Yeah. yeah. That really helped my motivational speaking career. So, I agree. Um, yeah, it, it would be my I was I would be there for the wrong reasons just to become <laughs> a mentor, not really to help people forge you, love. You couldn't do any worse than what's his name that was like everyone hated it was like you're the worst motivational speaker ever or I think it'd be really good if they had someone that was like a little more invasive right you know like someone that was like um Abigail Noah come here like we need to hash this out like (laughs) you know like somebody just like intervened Uh uh-huh yeah you still didn't give us a name Daniel no I didn't um you can name yourself I think I think you would be fabulous I you, and I mean, I think Connie Hansen as like a kind of side, oh. um, like providing a little humor, entertainment, personality, you kind of running things. Like, I just feel like the two of you could really bring this together. That's a power couple right there. Mm-hmm. How about Dr. Phil? Let's get Dr. No. Phil. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I'm having a heart. I keep thinking of things that would like entertain me. <laughs> but not necessarily ones that um, would maybe be good decisions. I was kind you know, of um, let Wells do it though. Yeah. Well, Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg have that show together, right? What if we oh, got yeah. them to come in as a couple and host? That could be awesome. I don't know What's if like- you've ever watched any of the clips of Snoop Dogg calling basketball, but it is amazing because he doesn't really know a ton about it. So it's just him like, what is they doing? And I think that would be amazing. I um I know, Phil, the moms. Oh, Sue and Janelle. Nothing would get done. There would just be a lot of questions asked. <laughs> God knows they wouldn't make a decision. And they'd set up all these activities. They'd have like tie dye night, and all the participants would be wearing tie dye all the time. I love where this is headed. That would be amazing. Oh my Maybe we need to like have our own local, like you and I, Bachelor in Paradise, <laughs> like with like Sue and Danelle. Oh, hosting. man. 
okay, who do I write a grant to to get the funding? Yeah, yeah, you have to rent an Airbnb. You know, it's things like this that would really distinguish our university. I agree. I mean, if you were a student trying to decide where to go, would you not want to go to the place that has its own Bachelor in Paradise on site? Well, so, so would um like the Paradise be like George Wythe? <laughs> I like love imagining them like the rotary reader here like to swim they're too scared to swim because there's the, the, goose, the goose poop and the geese attacking <laughs> we're taking you to the rotary reserve <laughs> oh my goodness cattle I like it. it would we could run it as like a social science experiment more like a lab like we would call it like you know bachelor lab Something like that. Love laboratory or something. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I like this. Mom, um, my and... mom would never be able to deal with people leaving the show. Aww. She would send them home with giant bags of cookies she made. Yeah. And, and Elaine's you know, mom does love getting involved in kind of like drama. She would eat up the like the interfighting. And then she'd be like, She's oh. not afraid to jump in the middle of the drama. Oh, I just don't like that one person. They're being mean. Yeah. Oh, man. This is so sure that her conspiracy theories were real. Oh, that right? would be, yeah. Absolutely. You live long enough to become the conspiracy theory, Sue. Well, this this was a productive podcast. We should just get it here. We got a great idea out of this. Yeah. Um, I don't know which administrator needs to listen to this to like make this happen. Patrick Peace. Um, Patrick. I like to say this is how you attract and retain students. Um, I don't have any data on that, but my <laughs> gut tells me this is this and the scooter project is how you do it. Um, that was a delightful detour we just took. <laughs> it was, it was. So I guess back to the show. We got Mari and uh Kenny, and who y'all things are starting to teeter. Kenny says that the passion just isn't as strong as it was yesterday <laughs> um and Mari says that she's holding back to protect her heart um kind of in a similar vein um we kind of get a highlight that things are starting to get complicated between Noah and Abigail and Wells urges Abigail to just share how she's feeling with Noah um because they're holding back too and then boom Gossip girl Anna shows up. People are still coming down to paradise. <laughs> I like I'm like I'm like performing now. <laughs> so, um, so uh she comes in, she's very much herself, and she puts on pheromones. Um, Bill, I need to know: is there any research in your field on pheromones? Yeah. Like is this strategy going to work? Will it be enough to override the existing relationships? Yeah. So I, I looked it up. Um, you know, there's like preference for smell. Um, and I think there was an episode, a, a season a long time ago where they had the bachelor smell people's clothing and rate who they liked the most. And there was one girl that he said the clothing smelled kind of sour to him, which was rough. Um, I, there is research on pheromones and attraction, but it's not like you can put pheromones on and it's going to turn somebody into like a mindless zombie, right? It's probably more of a preference and you can't tell which one drives the other one. Like, are you predisposed to like the smell of something and it makes you have feelings of arousal or do you have feelings of arousal and then you attribute it to them? But it's not like you can't like put something on and then you'll attract men. So if you see anything in a magazine that says that it's probably a lie. Uh, Elaine, anything to add? Um, one, of the th one of my thoughts from what I know about pheromones is they're naturally produced. And I don't know if taking like artificial things and sticking them all over your body is really a good strategy. Really, someone just sold her essential oils. Right. That's what it is. From I mean, a yeah. multi-level yep. marketing scheme. She's she, probably in now. She's not going to be able to yep. get out. She's she got trying to sell them to people on the beach. She got drug into Young Living and then she was like, they were, <laughs> they're going to be sitting on the beach and she's going to be like, you know what makes me so happy? Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Five thieves. 
you know, if you were in like a pyramid scheme, multi-level marketing, and you went to Bachelor in Paradise, you would have such an audience because people couldn't really get away from you and you could just keep pushing your product. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know if that's against the rules. I mean, I know what, what, um, can't run for I office. Did was against yeah. the rules. But I don't know about that. Okay. So here's my plan. Step one, start an MLM. <laughs> Step two, become host of Bachelor. Step three, launch both my MLN and my speaking career. <laughs> this is how Danielle makes her millions. Bachelor has no compunction about like shamelessly promoting things, right? It's like all of the, like if you could just become a sponsor, they'd put your crap all over, you know? Well, they don't seem to really advertise things on the show, right? So they can go back to their Instagram account and be like, drink this shake, right? Right. But like typically you don't see them on the show, like talking about like, right. But I think- only eat builder protein. And they don't drink out of cans like I'm doing. I think the franchise though, has marketing stuff because they'll have like a car and you can tell it's very prominent oh. that it's like a Kia or you know those bands somebody paid for them to be on there so you just got to sponsor the show Danielle and then they'll I let am you not sure in I don't know if I've watched this show ten, like 10 years that's crazy is that right I've probably watched this show for 10 years and whenever they bring in a band I have not known one of them <laughs> yeah. none of them they always make a big deal about, oh, we have this person. I have never known who that person is. And I don't know, I don't know if the bachelor, bachelorette people do either, but I'm sure that they're like told in advance so that they can act excited. Yeah. But they're not like well-known artists. They're like, um, I think they're like country music, um, mediocre, kind of trying to make their way up. Like that's who it usually is. Yeah, they. I do feel like they have diversified their music mm. lately. Like there was like an R and B person, yeah. Yeah, it seems like before it was almost always like country music, and it does seem like they have expanded their musical Good. preferences. So, okay, a little bit about Anna. So Tia is pretty worried about her because she's so cute, um, and she ends up asking James on a date. Any thoughts about Tia, Anna, and James? Eh. Well, I feel like you reap what you sow, Tia. Like, you <laughs> you give a guy a rose and you're like, you know, whatever. I guess I'll be with you. Then another girl comes out. You can't be sad about it, you know? Like, you have to date them as much as they date you. Yeah, she never really... Um... She never really showed James a genuine interest in him. It was kind of like, you're the best of these two options right now, I guess. Right. So, you know, I don't necessarily know if she has a right to be offended that he's on a date with somebody else. I've What's talked the- about this in here before. I've talked about this, but like there's this theory and it's kind of like the economics of being in a relationship. And it's hard to leave somebody when you have something invested um, and there's not a better alternative. Um, but I feel like she didn't really give him any reason to like, think that she was the better alternative. Right. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah, I like you. And then this girl comes in and she thinks you're really cute. And yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I think that I didn't feel like she was offended that James like went on a date with Anna. I think she was just like more worried that she was going to be left alone, yeah, but, right? You know, yeah. um, the idea of being, than a wolf. being with a guy she thinks is fairly yeah. okay. As we're ranking them, being alone is right. worse than being with vanilla. A guy Dave. you're not interested yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. So James and Anna do go on this date. Again, there's some food fun here. So they roll in cinnamon and sugar this time. I'm okay. over this. Okay, so I will say I did a little research on food and intimacy. I love it. And um, so it was kind of funny. The article that I read, um, well, and I read a few, but like the one that it was most interesting to me, you know, basically um, had people share food with each other 
and then like ranked sort of how people would like observing would like rate their relationship. So what I was the so one thing that they pointed out, which I think is kind of obvious is that if you share with someone, you typically like share food with someone like by like feeding them, you probably have a more intimate relationship, right? Like I think at one point they say something like, you probably wouldn't do this in professional settings, right? Like if I was like feeding Elaine like food at like an apartment meeting, like people would be like, well, that's weird. <laughs> I love it. I want this to happen now. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Danielle, next time we're in a meeting, I want you to just like to the person beside you reach over and just like try to like airplane food into their mouth. <laughs> just like hand feeding. <laughs> I'm like, the most awkward thing to think about, right? Because it would be right. weird because we see that as sort of an intimacy thing. And that if you are comfortable sharing food with someone that means that you're probably closer to them. And so it does increase intimacy. I did not, I will say the research that I read did not necessarily address eating food off of people's bodies. Well, I have a comment on this. Um, so Bill and I are friends, Christy and Jorge. Um, we go out to eat a lot. We spend a lot of time eating <laughs> whatever we do. And everything is fair game. We just like eat off of each other's plates or, oh, do you want to bite of my Sam? It's not like in, to the point where we don't like cut things off and give them. It's like, here's my burger, have a bite. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing about it is um, I don't do really spicy foods. Actually, I don't do spicy at all. Like I, I have had pizza that is too spicy for me. And I know that's ridiculous. So I'm limited. And also I don't eat beef or pork. So a lot of times I'm out of the trade. So the three of them do this, you know, have you tried this, try this, here's some for my plate, whatever. And sometimes I actually feel like a little left out. Like I'm out of the intimacy. Yeah, maybe. Because I can't, like, I'm like, oh, I can't eat that. I can't eat that. I can't eat that when they're doing it. You should ask Christy to give you sips of um, let me beer martinis, <laughs> you know, that way you get to, to make up for it. Well, to I mean, the, I intimacy. the fact that you're grabbing things off of each other's plates is a sign probably that you all's friendship is really close, right? That if you were yeah, just I mean, it is. someone that maybe yeah. to do that would seem weird or intrusive, but like the fact that you are close enough friends that you can do that, um, <clears throat> it, I think is probably a sign of how close you all are also like feeding people food is a sign of caretaking is one of the things that the article talked about and how like actually like women feeding men is um more common I I don't know and and partly is because they attach it to this caretaking sort of thing um so when you you, you know we do this in other ways right um, my neighbors just had a baby. I'm going to bring food over to their house. It's like a form of caretaking. Um, so there's ways in which like sharing food with other people is also a sign of caretaking. And then this article did say that for some people, caretaking is an expression of love, mm -hmm. right? So it would make sense that in a relationship, if by caretaking is like a way to maybe express love to someone, right? I have a, um, somewhere at some point um, on my um, When Dementia Knocks blog. Um, I, I've, oh, you're really, you're really pimping all your projects out here today, Elaine. <laughs> um, but I've written several times about food where we show mm -hmm. caring with food because we, we don't know the words to say, but it's our way of loving people. And, you know, it's like your husband died. Here's a casserole you know, and I, I feel like many times it's a, it's a symbol. I mean, yeah, sometimes you eat it. Sometimes you have so much, you throw it away. So, sometimes you don't like the food and none of that really matters, mm -hmm. you know, but it's what we do. I appreciate being taken care of yeah. by being given food, <laughs> especially with food. Yeah. So I'm having surgery October 14th. So if anyone would like to bring or order food, um, I'm, I'm not going to turn it down. I'm just saying, cause Bill's on crutches. 
and I'm having back surgery in two weeks. And our goal is he'll be off crutches before I have surgery. Otherwise we, we may have to um, like hire a CNA. I don't know. So. And with that, Elaine only has a few more spin classes. And if you are interested in taking spin, you can follow her at her classes are amazing, you all. But once, but after <laughs> surgery, I'm still going to teach. I'll just be off the bike. I can yell at people and walk around. So we'll be, be changing the name of this podcast from Bachadamia to Things Elaine Does <laughs> really <love> well. <laughs> after Saturday's class, Saturday's class is mashups and mimosas. So if you want to come to my class Saturday, you get a mimosa <laughs> or two or however many you want. Just saying. We have I'll be like Saturday and I think Sunday this week. Yes. Woo! But I can't go tonight because mm. uh, I got to eat. I'm eating dinner with my parents before they oh. leave town for like a month. Oh, so, um, so yeah, they roll in um, round in cinnamon and sugar. I don't get it. I said that like, I, I don't get at it. this point that one of the producers is actually a cannibal. And this is like a long <laughs> Hansel and Gretel <laughs> <laughs> that's Which, amazing like, I laugh about, but i have to say right after this they bring out snakes so like then they're like oh yeah we're gonna get actual massages like this will be great and they're like by a snake i don't um, do it. Can a, does a snake give a good massage i don't understand i mean I if know. a snake on my back could provide the right pressure in the right places i would be fine with it i just don't see it happening or like a snake you can't be like can you give me a little deeper yeah. pressure there? You're so holding hard. a lot of tension in your traps. I'm just gonna, the snake's like, I'm gonna wrap around your neck and then try to eat you whole. <laughs> but they, because they taste like cinnamon and sugar. Right. But like, I mean, I would say like, what's interesting to me is the dates on Bachelor, Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise have always seemed kind of like funny to me. But what's interesting is with Bachelor in Paradise, I feel like we've gotten very little of the dates, yeah. right? Like actually more has been around what's happening back at camp or wherever they're at. And so um, I feel like we see these dates, but it is hard to feel like we know where the couple's relationships are because I don't feel like we've really seen that much i don't know so i would contest that you're actually seeing how compatible they are better by watching them in the mundane things because i think that's where most relationships yeah. are are gonna work or not work right it's easy to like really get along with somebody when you're in a helicopter or getting strangled by a snake you know it's way different when you're like on the 18th hour of sitting by the pool and you like stop chewing with your mouth open or you know whatever so why are you wearing those socks and sandals joe <laughs> rock those socks and sandals joe right. <laughs> so mckenna shows up she is weird um i i mean mckenna's just weird right. she also seems incredibly insecure to me um everyone on the beach is already taken at this point she keeps pulling people aside and they're like yeah yep i'm already with someone Except for Aaron, he doesn't really say that he's available, nor does he say that he's taken. And so she asks him out and she, and he pulls her aside and is like, mm, you know, I'm just not an emotional place for this right now. And then McKenna spirals. She's like, I just didn't think it would be this hard. My time on like Bachelor in Paradise is so terrible. So Ed comes in. He saves the day by asking McKenna on a date. It takes a bit of persuading, but eventually she does agree. And then Natasha is left kind of going, wait, wait, what? Huh? <laughs> so then McKenna and Ed go on a date and it's kind of blah. I mean, they roller skate, they eat dinner with a um, disco ball and then they kiss. But like, I have no clue what their connection really is by watching this date. I mean, it's a, it's a pity date. I mean, like, I think no, I mean, generally, or not Noah. Um, I think Ed genuinely like felt bad, felt awkward, and stepped in. I feel like Ed's punching above his weight here. Like McKenna is like a we were talking this morning, she's like a cartoon character of like the girl next door. Like she's like a Disney, like if they drew it, would look like her, like great big eyes and 
And so, and then Natasha's gorgeous. And it's like Ed, who looks like he's from the Flintstones here, is now like got two women who are way above his level of attractiveness. I, he's amazing. Well, and what I will say is it's kind of tough because I feel like either relationship really doesn't have time to go anywhere on this show. Right. It's like a part of me that's like, what's the point? Like, why are they even bringing other people in? Like, let's just do things to develop the relationships that are there and like, let them fizzle out or grow on their own. But I don't know. That's why I guess I'm not a producer. So back in Bachelor in Paradise land, Serena and Joe talk about the future. Um, Natasha's still freaking out. Um, And Mari decides to address her and Kenny's issues by bringing in a bruja. Is that right? Which is a witch who cleanses energy. Thoughts on this as her relationship repair approach. (laughs) So was she the one, like, whose idea was this? I don't think it was anyone's. I think it was a crazy lady wandering along the beach and the producers are like, we're out, let's do it. Great. And like the contestants are so used to just like weird stuff. They were like looking at the producers and the producers were like, I think that's ours. Yeah, I think we ordered it. I don't know. What's like funny to me is that it seems to have worked for them, right? So like, what's interesting is the up and downs with these couples, right? Like one, I'm like, you all have all day with each other. Sometimes I'm like, how have you not talked about these things? Like, it makes no sense to me. And then like, they're like, oh, well, the passion just isn't there. And she's like, well, I'm protecting my heart. I'm like, well, like, it's been like two days since you went to the boom, boom room. Is it that like, we just need to like, I don't know um but then they do this little date and then it's like that seems to be enough and I'm like are you all just bored I don't know (laughs) they have to be bored I mean honestly well they don't even have their cell phones to play on while they're by each other so it's not like they can do like we normally do where we watch tv and we're on our cell phones and it's like you got anything to do tomorrow no cool 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 like they just have to talk like see i'd be so good at that like i would have told this person everything about my life (laughs) like everything like they would know who my childhood best friend was like they would like i mean like they would know all the weird things about my family members that they might need to know like i would think that that would escalate the relationships more quickly and instead it just seems like they're like Uh, we're just gonna like avoid talking about anything real small talk drink and go to the boom boom room and that's like the way these relationships develop are I mean obviously you're just in a different setting than the real world but you know normally if you date someone you see them for a couple hours you know and then maybe a week later you spend a few more hours with them and then you like them and then it develops to where you maybe see them every other day and it's like this, this kind of, there's usually like this gradual increase of time that you spend with somebody, but here it's totally different, but it's like, you can't be on a date all day. Like you can't consider it a date every day when you wake up from when you go to bed. Like you can't expect that to be like quality time with that person. Cause that just doesn't work when you're there that long, you know? Yeah, I don't. Well, so like, okay, so for example, or Noah tells Abigail that he's falling for her and she like kind of freezes, but like, you're also like, at this point, their relation has seemed pretty stable. They've had all this time together. People are predicting them to be like the couple that lasts, right? So why is, I'm also like, why is this so shocking to her that she would freeze? Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just hard sometimes. Like, even though you may understand that to hear it, I think it's hard for people. But I also think for her, I wonder how well she, because she said he said it and I felt like he kind of stumbled and accidentally said it. And then she's like, so I didn't say anything because I wanted to give him a chance to say something. I wonder sometimes if her hearing 
plays a role in some of this, like, you know, cause she wants to make sure she heard what people said and the way they were laying there, like she wasn't facing him. So I had a problem with the way their relationship started. If you remember, we're Noah rolling right. Thomas, let's yeah. Let's talk about them. Let's roll right into it. I love it. Yes. Go Should for I, it. or do you want me not? Yeah, no, I'm saying let's, I like it. Oh. I like you taking charge. Well, okay. This is why so I married the way you. The relationship started. Um, Noah said he was really excited um, to meet Abigail because she was, she was deaf and he was a, uh, a traveling nurse and he thought that would be a good fit, which bothered me a lot because I don't really think she needs care. Yeah. She's not looking for a caregiver. She's looking for a partner. And I thought it was odd because it seemed like he wanted to date her, um, because she was deaf. Yeah, it seemed a bit like like fetish fetishizing it or like in making her like, like he infantile. Could help her. Yeah. Like, oh, I could help her. And yeah. I don't think she needs help. And she seems oh. not to like that either. Cause that one time he's like, You're just so sweet. And she was like, you could tell she just like, I don't enjoy being. Yeah, she made that exact face, Danielle. If you could do that again for everybody, if you're watching. <laughs> well, so I mean. Yeah, so I guess I'll kind of fast forward a little bit. So everybody finds out that they're going to prom and it's going to be an 80s themed prom. I'm a little freaked out by the amount of people that are unaware of like what the 80s is. Makes me feel a little old. They do a few promposals. They're cute. Joe writing in the sand, you know, things like that. They get to prom. Everybody's dancing. Tia feels left out because everybody's coupled up or her. And then they announce the prom awards where they like announce Noah and Abigail as being like the couple that's happily ever after prom king and queen goes to Joe and Serena. Marissa's the best kisser. Um, I guess any thought on these awards or anything like that? I thought they were dumb. Yeah, they're dumb. I thought, oh, I thought the awards were dumb in high school too. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, they could have just been a little more creative with them. Right. Or like it would have been fun if they could have had like fans vote. Mm. And like, oh, they could have like announced. Yeah. You know, I, I did get do that, but it would have been fun. I did get voted best hair in my high school yearbook. You did have quite the luscious which by which by transitory property means so did you danielle since right now you guys have the same haircut i i actually was also voted best hair in my See? yearbook i um, feel like we Bill and i had competition on facebook and i lost yeah somebody Bill said my fun. hair looked my hair looks softer and fuller <laughs> he picked the pictures though so i'm like calling it a cheat <laughs> So Bill, so Bill's getting a haircut uh, Saturday and not, I'm feeling like a lot of pressure, Bill. Yeah. Um, well, it's since fine. your hair, I mean, your hair is a thing now. Yeah. Well, I'm going bald. So we've only got a little bit of time left. You don't know what you got till it's gone, folks. No, oh, the lessons that we dole out here on Bachadamia. We got five minutes before Dr. Ashball has to go to another meeting. All right. I can be a couple minutes late. I'll just text her. Okay. So Aaron ends up playing Tia side in a move that none of us predicted. Um, and so I kind of think that it's going to be this friend thing that he's like worried about Tia and that he's kind of just going to be friendly. And then like, boom, they're like making out and she's like throwing her leg over him. And it kind of doesn't feel like it's Tia still doesn't like, neither of them really seem like into it. Chelsea's clearly pissed. And she also sort of says that like her and Aaron have, she has like pretty intense feelings for him which I was also like shocked by like what the heck is happening here I hope there was a lot of alcohol involved all that I could think is that like Aaron felt like when Chelsea made out with Ivan that it was her communicating that she wasn't that into him and him going like fine then I think he's kind of vengeful on that oh yeah 
I think I hope that this comes to a head next week and she tries to call him out and he can be like, well, you made out with what's his nuts. So Ivan, why not? Well, yeah, I don't, I just don't see this relation. I don't, to be honest, I no. didn't see any of them. Like, probably no, none of those are going to be significant relationships. No, no. So then like, we do have this like sloppy breakup <laughs> between Noah and Abigail. So like, we find out that Abigail is going to explain that she's also falling for Noah but Noah's kind of like freaking out because he told her that he was falling for her and she doesn't really respond and so it seems like it really feels to me like both of their insecurities yes. is like getting in the way of them being okay with each other you know like that like if they could just both get over their insecurities they'd actually do just fine um but like they can't seem to communicate with each other and so he ends up like pretty much like breaking up with her and obviously she's upset but at no point does she even still communicate how she yeah. felt about him well i think the i'm falling in love with you thing is ridiculous it's like an intermediary step so you don't have to be the person to take the first jump and say I love you right and I, I just feel like either say it or don't like but I, I don't love you but I don't not love you right it's like I don't want to fully commit and it's like I don't know if you really need to say it and it just creates more drama um and also I think I've talked about this before I don't really know that like there's a point when you've fallen in love with somebody like like they say it like it's this like point like now I am in love with you we have reached this milestone and I don't know if that's really a thing it's like you know your love fluctuates for people so you you know like when you're saying I'm falling in love with you it's like at what point are you in love what part do you fall out and I just feel like it creates this weird nuance we need like a color wheel like where on the color wheel? A feelings wheel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Or like the, the flag system that they use, like at the beach, like it's a red flag day, folks. <laughs> yes. So like, what do you all, what are your predictions for the finale? I think Joe and Serena will be the only ones that have a meaningful connection after. I, I agree with that. Um, I think Joe will have a lot of stress and anxiety about whether he should propose. Mm. I think there's going to be a, an inner struggle with that. Um, I'm not, you know, Kenny and Mari, um, I didn't have a lot of hope for them, but you know, there seems to be something there. So I don't know where that one's going to go. I feel like Kenny and Mari are going all the way. Um, You're just I'm saying this. To, to Danielle is just saying this to stir me up. <laughs> I think the first time they have a problem and they can't have the producers pay for a witch, they're going to break up. <laughs> but I mean, if you know what works now, maybe they can just reach out and figure it out. No, I don't. Yeah. I'm like really annoyed that they're bringing Kendall back on again. I'm, I'm just not. like, I love oh. it. Let's do it. Drum, drum. I just feel like drum. it's so mean to like everyone, including Kendall. But it's so nice to us, the viewer. Absolutely. All right. So, what we learned this week? I just like the idea of Kenny and Mari going through the yellow pages and like, witch for hire, therapist, witch therapist witch where we don't have any in Chicago we're gonna have to drive to Bloom Bloomington you should talk to the people you love that's my lesson communication is kind feed your friends Ooh. <laughs> um, just don't feed off of your friends because that would be awkward yeah um if you see a woman a witch wandering around and she needs to like clear negative attitudes just um you know let her do her thing believe in it yes and that's what you should do exactly yes and 
Oh, shout out to Drew. Cool. Shout out to Lane. Um, it is homecoming weekend coming up. So everybody at you and I have fun. Don't do stupid things. That is a good way to end. What time is the parade? I think it's 11. Well, it's on Main Street this year. In case you didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. Thanks for attending, everybody. Bye, Bye. friends. Bye. <laughs>You've been listening to Bachadamia with your hosts, Drs. Daniel Dick McGew and Bill Henniger. All opinions expressed on this show are solely the opinion of the person who spoke them. If you like our podcast, please consider following us, leaving us a five-star rating, and a positive review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, please share with your friends, family, and other ardent Bachelor content lovers. If you have comments or questions you would like us to address on the show, you can email us at bachadamia at gmail.com or on the Twitter with the handle at Thanks for listening.